Here's Ryan driving inside, scores off the glass. He muscled his way around Omersa. I think this is kind of just building off last year. Um, last year, you know, I was kind of the sixth man for a while, and Bear was the sixth man, and uh, just you know, kind of off the off the bench. I mean, just trying to make an impact, trying to you know fit right into the flow of the game, and uh, not have a, a drop off when someone comes out of the game, one of the starters, and uh, that's just something that I've really you know tried to up again this year. Uh, and on top of that, just really up my leadership um, of how much uh, I've I've tried to you know, help the young guys, help to get everyone to uh, you know keep everyone together, you know, move things along, um, stuff like that, and just. Uh, you know, I've been through the battles um, that you know some of the freshmen and sophomore haven't been through. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's definitely been fun to be you know the old guy. He had a tough sophomore year with with injury, but also had a great sophomore year because when he was healthy, he was terrific. And then came back as a junior was an integral part of us getting back to the NCAA tournament after having a down season. Coach has always been someone who really believed in me. Um, he was probably the first high major uh, coach who really got involved with me. Um, and, uh, you know, the first time uh, he actually came to watch me play, I had one of my worst games in my whole career. And, um, uh, you know, he really stuck with me. He wasn't just going to, you know, go, go and say, oh, wow, this guy sucks. Um, you know, he, he really stuck with me, and um, that, that meant a lot to me. And also, uh, just the way that he's been able to, you know, really turn the program around. I really appreciated that because I've always been a, you know, a lifelong Hawk fan and, you know, you know, you hear, I wasn't really old enough to understand, you know, uh, some of the other stuff, but, you know, the way that he's really um, turned things around and uh, made an impact in the community and just statewide, um, I really appreciate that as well. And um, I, I really like, you know, his style of play, just the up and down, you know, push the tempo stuff. I've, I've always liked that too. Ryan Creener is really smart. He's also tough, physically tough, mentally tough, but he's a real thinker. Uh, when he's talking on the floor, people listen because he's always right. He knows our plays inside and out. He knows where he's supposed to be, where everybody else is supposed to be, and whatever defense we're in. And he talks. Uh, he has really prepared for this season. He's worked hard. Two shot to Craner. He's open for three. Good. Ryan Craner hit the huge shot against Ohio State the other night at three and comes back and responds similarly. I feel like I'm a really versatile player. Um, I can play on the perimeter, I can play inside. I like to take advantages of mismatches, um, whether it's my mismatch or someone else's mismatch on the floor. I try to get them involved. Um, good passer, can knock down the open shot. Um, just uh, play with a lot of passion. He can dribble, pass, and shoot. So he, he's got moves off either shoulder in the post, so he's got jump hooks. Uh, he's long, so he can dunk in traffic. He can block shots. He can step out and make threes. But he's not a mistake guy. He knows and understands the game, and he knows what we want. And he has the ability that if he does make a mistake, to run back and play defense and don't let them score. He's got a great ability to do that. Pemsel lobs back door to Kreiner, throws it up there. This one finally goes down, took its time, rattled around the cage and down through. It's pretty special, you know, you, you know, you get to walk out uh, to the school song and, uh, you know, you, going through warm-ups and stuff, it's pretty cool. You know, you got all the Iowa gear on and, um, you know, when the lights go black and, uh, you know, you hear your name called walk out of the tunnel, it's pretty awesome. You know, you look up, you see, you know, the, all the, you know, banners, rafters and everything that, you, you know, you've seen as a kid. And, it's just, uh, it's a lot different view from when you're down on the court and everyone's, you know, looking down on you. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Ryan Creener's a winner. And, uh, you know, I think as a coach, when you recruit somebody that you know has those qualities and when you watch them, exhibit them on a daily basis and watch them have a great experience and kind of live out their dream. You always wanted to be a Hawk. It's a great thing. The Nittany Lions are in town for some Saturday morning basketball. The season is down to a precious three games before tournament madness begins in Indianapolis. The Hawkeyes are home sweet home for two of the next three in the hunt for a bye at the Big Ten tournament. Wieskamp hits a three. Oh, Joe Toussaint to Joe Wieskamp. Garza gets Iowa the lead, though, with a three. Back-to-back -back trays. 
from Iowa's two leading scorers, Garza and Wieskamp. C.J. shooting, scoring! C.J. Frederick. You don't think they've missed that kid? Yeah, right on the money there. The out-of-bounds play. Once again, the Hawkeyes execute perfectly. Joe brings the ball down the floor himself. Across the midcourt stripe. Between the legs dribble. Skip pass inside to Garza. Drops inside, lays it up and in. What a fake he put on Hera. That's not even fair. Toussaint hopping around with a dribble. Creener comes into the game, drives inside, up and in. Beautiful fake. Hemsel lobs back door to Creener. Throws it up there. This one finally goes down. Took its time. Rattled around the cage and down through. Pemsel to Bakari Evelyn. 22-15 Penn State. Pemsel shot fake. Scores on the layup inside. Hera, once he took the fake, he had to let him go or commit the foul. Looking for the big fella guards inside. Now backs it out. Spreads the floor. Draws a double team. Whoa. And nearly threw it away. CJ gets it back. Here's Cordell inside. Scores off glass. A beautiful double move. Went left. Came back right. 30 to 22, Penn State has its biggest lead. Garza short springs the jumper, gets it back, reverse layup, no good, puts it back again. Played catch with himself. Wieskamp to Pemsel. And a wild Not pass. Down. It's picked up though, somehow Garza got it. Now it's peeled, pried away from him. He gets it back, throws it up, no good. Rebound again, up, no good. Rebound at Pemsel, good. Left handed tip by Pemsel. Frederick goes coast to coast for a layup. What a nifty move as he danced his way through a double team. 30-28 Penn State. Big time move by C.J. Frederick in the open court. Avoided the charge and danced through the defender. Connor directing traffic. Frederick's open for three. Good look at it. Down it goes. Stand still. Look at a three. Penn State tardy getting back. Penn State gets back on defense. Wieskamp with a great move. Drives inside. Scores. Left baseline drive. Talked it down. Here's Joe. Has the ball knocked away, just eight to shoot. McCaffrey will stand still and shoot a three. Good again. Connor's two for two. Yeah, nice form there by Connor. Good ball movement by the Hawkeyes. Now almost to the corner to Garza. He drops it inside. Here's Wieskamp posting up inside and scoring. Here's Toussaint inside to the big fella Garza. Drop step, hook shot up and in. Timeout, Penn State. Good job by the Hawkeyes coming out of the locker room with energy and sticking to the game plan. Garza for a jump shot there. That's what I was looking for. Get the ball to him. Cut to seven with the dread three. Garza shot fake from three. Now jumps up. Corals one in from 15 feet. Left of the lane to Creener. Creener whirls into the paint with a smaller Stevens on him. Jump hook. Good. Ten and a half to go. Evelyn inside layup. Good by Frederick. There's nobody on the team that moves better without the basketball than C.J. Frederick. He's going to shoot the basketball with Lee's camp on the bench. Here's Connor, tied up, bounces inside to Garza, go to the big guys, curls to the paint and scores. Here's a pass underneath, Garza dunks it through. Looked like Connor McCaffrey got fouled, then he found a wide open Garza. The Hawkeyes are going to win it by nine, and that NCAA March Madness uh, train is chugging toward the depot. The Heartland is brought to you by Mediacom. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme. Feel the power of amazingly fast internet up to one gig. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. They have an older brother, so they were always following him to all of his tournaments and everything and I think from that point on they were very competitive and wanted to um, get involved with sports too and basketball was probably their favorite one. I think a lot about just us playing basketball in the backyard. We have a little concrete slab with a hoop and um, we there are a lot of epic games out there. It usually ended with somebody running and crying um, from getting their feelings hurt. We went to a lot of women's games growing up. Um, <clears throat> my mom has some like old pictures of us with Herky. Megan was always one that tagged along to all of Mackenzie's practices when she had her little team practices that Mark coached. And so if they needed an extra player, she'd always jump in. So for the most part, they get along really well. They um, you know, would share a bedroom and everything. And just the typical sister, you know, battles every once in a while over clothes and... I don't know if we really got along very well. As growing up, um, we've definitely gotten closer since we've been in college, but 
We were very competitive with each other and it seems like we were always arguing about Megan stealing my clothes <laughs> or oh, some little thing like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I would reiterate what you have to say. I don't <laughs> think we got along very well growing up and I think it mainly was just the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. Megan went, she forgot her water bottle so she went over and grabbed Mackenzie's water bottle and took a drink. Well then Mackenzie went and grabbed it and squirted it all over and so then the coach had to stop the practice and everybody had to run killers. For the rest so. of the <laughs> Megan had been using water my bottle. water bottle. This was not just a one-time thing. She always was using the my water first bottle. Week of practice. <clears throat> so I grabbed, she started drinking out of it and I just took it from her and I squirted her right in the face and Coach Clawson was not happy. And we were running the rest of practice and then <laughs> um, all, the all of our teammates were very upset. For both of us it was really special. Um, the thing that was nice about it and, and I thought they, they grew as a team and as sisters as the season went along. Mackenzie really took Megan under her wing that last season, midway through the season and kind of trusted her a lot and the rest of her teammates. That was an incredible experience. I would say that was probably the first year where Mackenzie and I started getting along better. Mm -hmm. There was like a turning point in the season where we were watching film at home and Mackenzie was like <laughs> getting on me and yeah, she always yelled at me on the court and so my dad just paused it and like told her that stuff has to stop and then I feel like after that it just it snapped clicked. and then mm -hmm. we started getting along better on and off the court and then the rest was history. Ahead to Megan Meyer. She goes up with the right hand. First two go, for Megan. Megan Meyer. The first game they suited up together this year. What was that like for you guys? To have two daughters down there on the bench together. <laughs> I might get emotional on that one. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I mean, we're lifelong Hawkeye fans, and, you know, we've fell in love with Iowa at a young I did at a young age for my dad and Ann in the same way and with her parents. and. It's just one of those things where it's, you gotta kind of pinch yourself. We're very lucky and, and uh, we're proud of them for how hard they worked, but yet at the same moment, we feel very blessed that this opportunity even exists. Here's Mackenzie Meyer for three. Buries it from the right wing. That was wonderful. That was a great experience. It's the perfect um, execution. And Megan has always had a good eye for the court and she, through the perfect pass and Mackenzie finished it off. <laughs> we gotta give Mackenzie a hard time because she literally del delivered the pass at the only spot Mackenzie probably could shoot it that quickly. And, but yeah, that was a special moment. We've watched it a few times on Twitter. Mackenzie's just been a great big sister and taken Megan under her wing to, you know, help her out with car rides and just getting to know around Iowa City. All the things when you're a freshman that are so overwhelming that we look back to see how, you know, she had to do that kind of on her own. And so she's been really good about helping Megan get um, fit in well with everybody. So definitely huge. She showed me um, all the good places to go around Iowa <laughs> City. And then I don't have a car here, so she's um, like I'm Uber her Uber driver. <laughs> yeah, she takes me a lot of places, so that's definitely helpful. It's been a great year, um, and I like just like relating to Megan. And I think we've grown a lot and gotten a lot closer. Like I mentioned, I, I give her rides everywhere, and we go to the mall a lot, or whenever we need to study, I always call Megan first. Um, we've had some sleepovers, and it's yep. just, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> They've made us very proud in everything that they have done. I think um, just this year, how they've, they've done a great job conducting themselves you know, as sisters and then being part of just a great group of girls and a great team. And we just are so proud of them and how hard they work and all the time, commitment and dedication that they put towards the basketball and so they can be successful at it. We've come to a point in the program where we are behind in facilities. Now that doesn't mean that we're not working, but what it does mean is that we know that we can make a jump with a new facility because we have the right people here. We have a vision to build the best facility on the planet. We have a vision to put the best wrestlers in that facility. Well, I showed up in 1976 as a freshman from uh, suburbs of Chicago. I had no wrestling background at, at whatsoever. 
But when I got here, uh, we had just won two national championships, and Dan Gable was the uh, coach for my freshman year. We didn't win that year, uh, but we won, I think, the next nine years. And so it was ingrained in me that this is what we do in Iowa. We win, no one beats us. And so Tom had a vision to build a great facility, the greatest wrestling facility in the United States, right next to Carver Hawkeye. Immediately I said, well, you know, I'd like to put up a million bucks to, to help facilitate that. And as time went by, went from one to two to three, and so I think it's money well spent. You know, we, we just want to be a part of, uh, of building this facility. The design of that facility is going to be important. It's still going to be connected to Carver Hawkeye Arena. We're still going to have home mat advantage. Another important aspect of the design is the Hall of Champions. Uh, in this new facility, that would be the front door. We need to do a good job of celebrating that tradition. How this facility will help our recruiting directly is while we want to sometimes kid ourselves and say that wrestling is a tough guy sport and all of our athletes are wired the way that all they need is heat and a mat and a roof, uh, young people don't think that way. A lot of times it's about the shiny and new and we need to upgrade that. Iowa wrestling is behind in our facility. We need to get with it to put the best facility on the planet, right on the location of Carver Hawkeye Arena, right on this property, just like it is now, but better. I'd like to see Iowa wrestling win the national title every single year, just like we did when I was going to school and, and thereafter. And I think this wrestling facility is gonna help that. It'll be great for recruiting. Kids will come in there and will just be blown away by you know where they're gonna practice. When you look at guys who we have on the team today, I wanna help those guys achieve their goals in any way, shape I can, and I think this wrestling facility is gonna do that. Hawkeye wrestling is bigger than just wrestling. It's bigger than just college wrestling, and it's bigger than just international wrestling. It's both combined and then add on to that. The legacy of Iowa wrestling is an important one, and what it means to me is that we continue that. Legacy is about the past and honoring that past, but more importantly, what are you doing to duplicate and exceed that legacy? And as rich as our legacy is to duplicate and exceed it, we need all hands on deck. And we have the right personnel, we have the right student athletes, now we need to get our facility up with the best in the world. The Heartland is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Avoid breakdowns in coverage with U.S. Cellular. hy where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. hy proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeye. Latham High Tech Seeds is proud to partner with the Iowa men's basketball team by raising money for every free throw made by the Hawks all season long through the Hawkeye Charity Stripe promotion. All proceeds will benefit the American Cancer Society and Coaches vs. Cancer program right here in the state of Iowa. Latham High Tech Seeds, cheering on the Hawkeyes from the free throw line and helping with cancer awareness efforts all across the state of Iowa.